everyone, Chef Blair here at the Robert McDonald House of Central Ohio. Today is baking day. We are making salted brownie cookies. I'm making these, um, one, because man, I love baking. It's, uh, it's actually what one of my degrees is in. Um, but also, it's my mom's birthday today. And unfortunately, I can't see her. We are gonna video time each other later today. Um, but I wanted to make these. She loves chocolate as well. She loves sweets as well. So these are gonna be for her. Um, so what I have here, I have our flour mixture. This is actually flour, cocoa powder, salt, and baking powder. And it looks this way because I sifted it. Now, sifting, if you've seen baking recipes, they all say different things, whether you should sift, whether you should not. Sifting does three things. It incorporates air, creates a homogenous mass, and it takes out impurities of anything. So what you will want to do is if your recipe calls for a cup of flour and a, two tablespoons of cocoa powder, and then it says sifted, you will want to sift those, so measure those out, sift those together. So if you measure after you sift, your measuring will be different. This is why a lot of bakers actually weigh their product as opposed to using uh, cups on actual scoops because weight is very different than measuring as far as sifting and not sifting. So a little bit of education on that, on that point. We also have some chocolate chips. We have in here, we have eggs, vanilla, regular sugar, um, and brown sugar. Now I have whisked this for five minutes. I did this ahead of time because y'all don't need to see me anymore <laughs> than you do here on the video. Um, so what this does, when you whisk eggs and sugar together for a long time, it kind of creates this like mayonnaise type consistency. It, this also creates air as well. And then I melted chocolate and butter. And I melted, it's called a Ban Marie or a double boiler. And basically what it is, is it is a pot of water that I put on the stove. I put this on top and I turned the water on to like a simmer. You don't want to uh, have the water boiling. You do want to just have it the light simmer. Basically what it is doing is it is preventing the chocolate from burning. Um, Sure, you can you can do this in a microwave. But you're like that's doing too much. You're doing a double boiler. Uh, if you want to, you can do it in the microwave. I would say probably do like 30 second increments. When it gets towards really the melty point, go more for 10 second increments. You don't want to burn your chocolate um, and mix in between. So what we're gonna do? We are going to add our chocolate to our eggs. Ooh, I'm spilling everywhere. So I'm gonna come over here. And typically I would actually do this in a stand mixer so I could turn the mixer on and uh, do a nice little stream. Right now I'm just kind of kind of take it along the side. I'm going to do this gradually. Why I'm, well, why I'm going to do this gradually is because I don't want this to deflate. This is why we, I didn't spend five minutes mixing this just because. <laughs> we want the air in it. That. And then turn that off, and we are going to add the rest, making sure you scrape it. So a lot of people are like, "No, don't scrape the bowl all the way. I want to lick it." Sure, go right ahead. Listen, if you were uh, in the kitchen, like in a professional kitchen, if you don't scrape the bowl all the way, man, people will be yelling at you because you're wasting product. <laughs> So you want to scrape the bowl as best as you can. If you're at home, go feel free, taste that batter. Do this. Yeah, Alright. Mix that together. Now I'm going to, instead of this going into here, because this is a rather smaller bowl, I wanted to do a clear bowl because I wanted to show you guys uh, all of from the inside, from the on top, everything. But I'm, I'm going to transfer to a metal bowl, kind of a larger bowl. We'll unplug this. Where's my unplug? <laughs> Jack.
All right. So now I'm going to transfer. This is chocolate. This is two types of sugar, eggs, vanilla. And we are pouring it into our dry mixture, which is our flour, our cocoa powder, our salt, and our baking powder. So from here, I'm going to just fold it in, mix it. I want to make sure, I'm, I don't want to be too vigorous with it because again, I want that air. I want to incorporate that. And I don't want it to, to deflate. Baking, you have to have a bit of patience. I remember in culinary school, um, a lot of, so a lot of the culinary kids had to take baking classes and then the baking kids had to take culinary classes, of course. And people who were strictly culinary, sometimes they were like, oh my gosh, baking is taking forever. Cause you have to like, you have to have a softer hand. And then of course you have, you're gonna wait on the baking part. And uh, I always found it thoroughly enjoyable. And I wish I could, I not wish, I could bake more at home. I don't because I don't need that line around my house. I have a sweet tooth, big sweet tooth as it is. So I'm not gonna incorporate it all the way because I'm going to add our chocolate chips. And I want the chocolate chips to get a little bit of that flour coating that helps it adhere to the batter. Um, if you are, if you make like blueberry muffins from scratch, or if you even put chocolate chips in your actual brownies or in your cake, um, it, sometimes you'll find that your add-ins will sink to the bottom. So coating them in flour will help them adhere to the rest of the batter and to stay up top. So we like this consistency. We want it to be like a brownie consistency. Now from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scoop and you can use spoons at home. Of course, if you want, I'm fortunate enough to have a scoop. Spray it with some cooking uh, spray. And place it down. So these will spread a bit. So I'm only going to do well, maybe like a three inches apart. So I'm only going to do six on here. We're going to pop these in the oven at 350. We're going to start at 12 minutes, but I am going to rotate at six minutes again because of hot spots and really with baking in general. You should always rotate your product, making sure that there is even baking. So, next slide you'll see these will be done, and we'll put some salt on top to make it that salty chocolate, and uh, maybe I'll eat one. I don't know. All right, I'll see you guys in the field. Cookies are out of the oven. They smell so good. I wish you could smell them. Uh, now it's time to top them with a little bit of salt. So I have this coarse kosher salt. I feel that it's best if you have iodized, it's totally okay. Um, I like the coarse because I, I do like the larger flakes and plus it's just it's beautiful. So we're gonna let these cool probably for about five minutes and then we'll take them off and um, I we will try, we will eat them for sure. <laughs> probably off camera. <laughs> Thank you again. Happy birthday to my mom. Um, thank you for watching and tell your family that you love them. And uh, again, social distancing. Wash your hands. Thanks, guys.